fan, what is the next topic up for bid? So this has been already happening uh, on the background of sorts, right? This whole uh, U.S. movement to create this naval task force with Israel against Yemen. We know that Yemen and Ansarallah have been really leading the charge and fighting Israel and really shooting uh, down ships and stopping the um, the Israeli forces from getting to these areas and helping Palestine. I mean, the Yemeni people have been really undergoing their own war of sorts with Saudi Arabia, remember? And there was an agreement reached that ended the seven-year war with Saudi Arabia that sees this conflict. While the United States is saying, you can't do that, Saudi Arabia. You need to continue going after these Houthi rebels. You need to go after these people because they're going after Israel. And going after Israel means going after the United States. Because remember, as Bobby Kennedy Jr. said it himself, Israel is there to basically protect the interests of the United States. And so there was a a decent article on the cradle where they talked about how the importance of the Red Sea is really what's going to come into play from the river to the Red Sea, why the U.S. is forming a new naval task force. Yemen has uh, shaken the trajectory of Israel's Gaza war by attacking ships en route to the occupation state. The U.S. and its allies now threaten to establish a naval task force in response, a move that is likely to backfire and even stoke more conflict. That is obvious because we know that the different forces in Lebanon, Syria, and uh, these these forces have said Iran as well, they will jump into the conflict or the fight uh, that Gaza has against Israel once they feel like the Palestinian resistance needs it. This is why so far they haven't. But Yemen has been helping out. And this is why Yemen um, and Ansarallah have been really looked on as a, a force to be reckoned with by many in the resistance, particularly, let me specify on Sralla, because there are forces within Yemen that are basically working in line with the Saudi government. So um, the, the article basically talks about how the Biden administration is mobilizing Arab and Western fleets. By Arab, we're talking about Saudi Arabia, the, uh, uh, the uh, what is it, the, um, not the UAE, um, uh, uh, just Saudi Arabia and a a contingent of the more pro-Western forces there. And the U.S. is going to use them to say that they need to attack Yemen. And so um, the White House is basically saying they're buying more time for Israel to achieve this victory in Gaza and eliminate the Palestinian resistance. But in reality, what they're trying to do is escalate this on another front in the Red Sea. Now, what this would do is basically force Yemen to block the Red Sea and there wouldn't be any access for anybody in the Red Sea because that's exactly what Ansarallah would do. And this would basically escalate the conflict into a world war, I think, because then you'd have Iran. And Iran, of course, is also in the middle of all of this. And when we're talking about the potential of a nuclear power like Iran getting involved, then you have the potential for a greater escalation in a world war. This could happen much, much more quickly than than we think, right? And so the criticism here is that the U.S., instead of de-escalating Instead of saying to Israel, hey, you need to cease fire, look at how many 20,000 plus Palestinians have been killed, Um, they are actually telling them they need to actually up the ante, go after Ansarallah, go to the Red Sea, and they're pushing Saudi Arabia to also get involved and start defending along with Israel the Red Sea and uh, stopping these Yemeni uh, Houthi rebels. So it's insane, but that's exactly what's happening. Uh, And Lloyd Austin, you know, has said that uh, if the world does not take care of it, of Israel's national security, uh, then, uh, well, actually, no, last week it was after Yemen's military campaign to halt Israel linked shipping gained momentum. Israel's National Security Council had Tachi Hanegbi declared that if the world does not take care of it, He will take action. And this is after Lloyd Austin discussed with his Saudi uh, counterpart, Khalid bin Salman, 
on the Houthi threats to freedom in the navigation in the Red Sea. So they're again talking about the navigation in the Red Sea being this sort of free uh, matter. And so this is going to get really ugly. I don't know if you can show the map, uh, Jamie, if you can show the map of where this is actually taking place. Right here, you can see this is the Suez Canal. This is the Red Sea. The Red Sea affects Egypt. It affects Yemen. It affects Saudi Arabia. Basically, Yemen would commit and cu cut it off and, and cut everything off in order to prevent the ships getting towards uh, going towards Palestine and going towards Gaza. So they they would they're really serious about this. And again, just like the Palestinian resistance, the Yemen. Uh, and the Houthi rebels, Ansarallah, they don't have anything to lose. They have already been fighting and been very vulnerable yeah. for a long time. And they see this as an existential war. This is something that I really want to point out. Just like we saw we that Russia sees this as, existential, as an existential war, that NATO sees it as an existential war. We have these uh, countries, these people that have been subjugated by the United States and Israel they see this as an existential war and they are not going to just simply allow Palestine and the Palestinian people to go under. And, and if they're, they're not going to allow it, believe me, the resistance is well connected. Neither is Lebanon, neither is uh, Iran. And of course you throw Syria in the mix, which is being constantly bombarded by Israel. This is a much bigger conflict than just Palestine. So mm -hmm. something to yep. watch right now. You know, I think a lot of people are sitting back wondering when is the resistance going to start going full throttle, right? You know, people have said right now Israel is very, very much preoccupied with what's going on. If Lebanon wanted to take back or Hezbollah wanted to take back territory, now would be the time. However, I think that they're very cautious of doing so because they don't want the Americans yeah. completely to commit to this right now. It is a tricky dance. It's just very much. But, you know, the, the Houthis, you know, we, we talked about this with Dave Camp stepping up. And showing the way, saying, let's go. We're not going to go. We don't care. We've been through this before. When I used to talk to one of my friends and he was telling me about the Houthis and educating me on them, it was like the movie Fight Club. Rule number one, nobody messes with the Houthis. Rule number two, nobody messes with the Houthis. They're not going to back down. They're not going to stop. And uh, this thing seems like it's just beginning. It's just going to continue to escalate. Hopefully it doesn't spin too far out of control. Um, I mean, I really wish that, you know, we as American citizens can get our government under control and tell them to pull the plug. You know, I mean, that's why we had that yeah. Vivek interview. These Vivek interviews were going on as Vivek keeps skipping along saying, I don't think we should support anybody. Somebody should ask him, Vivek, are you going to pull the plane, the, the, the funding on an everyday basis of Israel? Because if we pull the funding on the everyday basis for Israel, their Iron Dome, everything, they'll cease to exist. They would have to behave. If not. They might even be conquered. You know, we might even say, hey, listen, we're going to pull the funding, but we're going to make sure they don't get invaded. But they only exist because we exist. When they bomb Palestinian children, we are bombing Palestinian children. And if this escalates more in the Red Sea, this thing can get way out of hand. So it's something to keep in mind, something to keep an eye on. Let's get to the last subject of the day. Or do you have one more? You have a hotspot video on this, right? Let's play the hotspot video. Is that what you have or? Yeah, I have a hotspot yeah, video. It's not necessarily on this, but it's related. Let's play it anyway. If it's Lindsey Graham, because, you know, I want yeah. my stomach to turn. Best so, money we ever spent. Hey, Russians. So uh, just real quick before we play this. So the instead of the, the U.S. de-escalating, they're asking Saudi Arabia to end this peace deal they made with Yemen, which is literally the hardest, you know, this is something Congress actually helped do. And now Lindsey Graham is saying that they need to go after Iran. They need to start this this war. And these are the people that are apparently, you know, in power. So let's hear from this lunatic. I've been saying for six months now, hit Iran. They have oil fields out in the open. They have the um, Revolutionary Guard headquarters you can see from space. Blow it off the map. I've been saying for six months now, hit Iran. Blow it they have oil fields out in the open. They have the um, Revolutionary Guard headquarters you can see from space. Blow it off the map. I've been so <laughs> it's very easy for him to say because he's not going to go do this, right? He's not going to go fight. He's not going to grab a gun and go fight. Yeah. No. No. 
blow it off the map. I mean, where have we heard the same rhetoric? Well, we have heard the same rhetoric from the Zionists in Israel, from the Israeli government. We need to eliminate, we need to uh, free Gaza of what it was, of what it, the Palestinians, right? And just have it there for Israel. These are the people that are, are trying to, uh, that are in charge of the US government and that are ready to go to a World War III scenario because blowing up Iran literally means World War III scenario, just so you know. And like, it's insane that these yeah. people are in government, but that's what we have to deal with. This is why the American public, as you say, Pasa, has to really do something to, you know, in some form or another, uh, Sam, stop this. And I don't know how, but yeah. it has Sam, to happen. if not us, who? If not now, when? I mean, this is ridiculous, yeah. and this is an everyday thing. We got people like Nikki Haley, defense contractors, line her pockets, and she goes out there and spews the same type of rhetoric. I mean, it's not even not even the fact that it's just World War III. Like, you want to just kill all these people, these people you know nothing about? I mean, this is disgusting, and these people are walking the face of the earth. Not only they're walking the face of the earth, the Lindsey Grahams and the Nikki Haley's, but they're lifted up, you know what I'm saying? And yeah. It it's truly is disgusting what we're facing here in 2024 as a, as we come into play.